Okay, so we left the upload to complete. So what we would have we didn't see was that it obviously slowly um, everything got uploaded. Once that completed, the survey started importing um, and went through various statuses associated with the import process. Once that completed, it now ended up in this state here, which is the pre-processing -pro -pre state. So here we need to do some manual pre-processing steps before it can finish the import process and make the survey available to you. So as you can see, there are two different types of processing steps. In this case, both are available to us. Um, the first is timestamp correction. So that's um, for cases where your images or videos have um, no discernible uh, timestamps in their metadata. So no machine readable timestamps. And so um, for images, that's quite rare. Um, that'll mostly typically happen when the EXIF data has been stripped from those videos, as I've actually done for a, por um, for a portion of this data set. Um, but for videos, it's actually quite common, unfortunately. Um, um, the vast majority of videos tend to not actually have a machine readable timestamp. So what we have to do for that and the timestamp this images is to um, visually extract the timestamps using AI from what's written on the, the image of the video. And so the AI is not foolproof, so it does occasionally make mistakes. And so we are at least able to, to identify those mistakes as statistical outliers for the, the, the data set. Um, and then those are left uh, for you to then just manually uh, correct. And so that's what avail is available to us here. But the vast, vast majority of, of you um, will just have image data and that Im those images will have um, timestamps. So you won't need to perform the step. So your vast majority, you'll find you'll arrive here and the step will be not applicable and you'll be on the, the static detection check only. That step, um, there you, you're wanting to just manually um, confirm or, or accept or decline um, suggested static detections. So basically what happens is we use mega detector to um, detect the presence of animals in the images. However, um, mega detector can mistake man-made objects as well as sort of odd looking rocks and stumps and logs and stuff like that as potential animals especially when we have a conservative threshold as we do, um, it just tends to err on the side of caution and highlight them as not background data that this is now potentially an animal that you need to check it. And so those, 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 those detections tend to be quite static in nature and tend to occur in you know, the exact same spot for a particular camera. And so we're able to automatically identify those um, for you. Um, but so what we do for, for improved detection performance is we have quite a low threshold on how those are defined um, or a lower threshold on how that's defined. And um, then we just suggest all these potential um, static detections to you. You can just simply accept or decline. It's a very quick process. Um, and then you can make sure that no animals are missed. You're only reliably removing um, true static detections. Um, so those are your two options here. You'll see both for both those tasks. You can either launch that task to perform it, or you can skip it. Obviously, that's not recommended, but you can do that. And then you can obviously delete the survey should you want to change your mind, um, or you've made a mistake and you've realized I don't know, something's wrong. So what we're going to do in this case is simply click Launch, and you'll see it will take us to the um, timestamp correction workflow. So that's what this is. You can see that there's only 12 timestamps that we need to correct. Um, you can see obviously the image for which you're trying to extract the timestamp from this um, from, from, from this bar. We've also included the um, folder name and file name of the particular image in case you have that encoded in your file names. That's quite a common thing people do as well. Um, and then you'll see that on the right here, you've got to from you know your largest date unit being the year downwards your work and you'll see that you can essentially just um, type in the numbers and it'll automatically go to the next um, field um, so in this case it's been able to automatically identify that this is on the 7th of june at one o'clock which is all correct so i just simply need to type in 51 in the minutes there are no seconds so i can simply press zero and then um, submit that by pressing enter same case here 
it's already pre-detected most of it. So all we need to do is enter the minutes. And again, there are no seconds, there's no second information here. Some of the points, um, you'll note that it is in 24 hour time. So just be aware of that. Um, and you'll see there's also an option here to um, press either spacebar, enter or tab to, to skip a field if it's entirely empty. So like in the seconds, you can just skip the field and it'll set to zero where possible or one where, for instance, like month or year, we can't, or year you can have a zero, but month you can't have a zero um, or day. So there it'll be set to one in the timestamp um, if that's not discernible. Uh, so in this case here, we can just write seven um, and you'll also notice out of interest, um, I can then press backspace to then go back into the previous fields. It's all nice and easy to use. Um, you'll also note that if I press, um, for instance, one, it doesn't automatically go to the next full hour. It doesn't automatically go to the next field because I could be typing one, I could be typing 12, I could be typing 17, etc. Um, so in that case, you press enter if you're just wanting to put in one. Um, but if you put in something like this case, seven, there cannot be seven, four, you know, as your, your hour. So it will automatically accept that. So it just makes it a bit easier to work with. Um, and that applies to all the fields. Um, um, or you can just press one, enter, and stuff like that, as I say, for those ones. Um, in this case, we've got 53, and it will then take us to seconds, and I can just, just press enter. And that, that process continues. Um, you'll see there are some other options. Um, for instance, you can just clear or just clear everything if you realize there's a mistake. That's the hotkey, C. Um, if you want to redo that from start, from the start, um, and do it that way. Um, you've got some other options like um, reporting the fact that the image has no timestamp, um, the singular image has no timestamp. So again, the hotkey N, you can do that. Um, otherwise, you've got other options like um, camera has no timestamp. And so what that does though is um, indicate that that entire camera either doesn't have timestamp information on it or it's just completely illegible. And the idea there is that um, if you use an option, you'll see it gives you a warning. So if I press um, S for that, it will come up with a warning that basically is saying, if you mark that camera as having no discernible timestamp, we will automatically remove all automatically um, extracted timestamps from those that camera's images or videos. Um, with the idea being then that if there is no timestamp information written on that image, anything that has been extracted is probably garbage. Um, so we can't reliably do that. Um, so the, the, the recommendation then also as a result of that is to just make sure you label one or two images first um, before, um, before doing that. So just make sure it's not like the first image um, or you know the early images were missing the timestamp for whatever reason. Um, but that's that. Otherwise, we just need to power through them quickly. Um, and once that's done, we can then move on to the next preprocessing step. Okay, so now we've finished. Um, it'll now bring up this um, notification just telling you that you've, you've finished um, editing your timestamps. Um, if you want to go back and make any changes, which is something after you've realized it didn't cover, you, you'll see there's the, the undo button. The key for that is tilde. It'll just take you back to the image and then you just um, edit it as necessary. Um, but if you do want to make go back and make any changes, now's the time. Otherwise, you can see you're done. Um, and it'll take you back to the surveys page. We can see it's now waiting for us to start the next pre-processing pre step.